your Bibles, if you would, this morning to Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, when you, when you find your spot there, if you would, uh, respect the reading of the Word of God, if you please stand, if you're able. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, of course, this is a book that Solomon wrote, the preacher, it's a book of wisdom. And there, it, it, sometimes it, it do us good to go back and read certain books of the Bible and certain chapters of the Bible because you, there's a lot of wisdom. There's wisdom in all of it, amen. But uh, sometimes we just need to be reminded of, of certain things. And um, I was thinking as Jeff was going through Sunday school this morning, it was almost like part one of my message. And I, I was thanking the Lord for the direction he gave me. It, it's neat. Brother Tom and I used to talk about it all the time, how the Lord puts things together. And, you know, in, in my flesh, I question sometimes. Uh, I know y'all never question God, but um, uh, and then, then something will happen or somebody will say something, and, and it's like, oh, okay, I, I got it. Forgive me. Um, but notice what it says right here. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter, utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon the earth, therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin, neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore, should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thine hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words there are also divers vanities, but fear thou God. The title of my message this morning is simply this, Watch Your Step. Watch Your Step. Heavenly Father, I love you. Thank you again for uh, your presence. Lord, and I do ask you now that you would guide my lips. You know the thoughts that you um, have shown me, Lord, through your word. And I, and I pray that you would, uh, once again, be an encouragement to us, Lord. I thank you so much for uh, your presence. Um, as I asked earlier and has been asked already this morning, bind the devil, please. Let us worship you in spirit and truth. I love you and praise you for what you're going to do for us in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Did you ever wonder? I thought about this a little bit this week. You ever wonder about the things that God could tell us and how it would affect our lives if we would just listen to him or if we would just hear him when he speaks to us in, in the book of Revelation. Um, there's seven verses in the book of Revelation, starting with Revelation chapter 2. It says, He that hath an ear, let him hear with the Spirit, saith unto the churches. And we know that there's three ways. I, I was trying this out on Tracy yesterday, and I was going through it, and I, I asked her, I said, what, what are the three ways that God speaks to us. Of course, we, we know He speaks to us through His Word, through the Holy Spirit's help. We, we understand that. He also speaks to us through circumstances because there's uh, some of us that have things happen in our life and, and you might be recalling them in your mind that have made us ready to listen or say, okay, you know, He does things, God does things to get our attention and it's, it's through circumstances. But there's a third way and sometimes He uses other Christians. Uh, yes, he, he talks to us through prayer, and, there, and there's other, other ways, but those are basically the, the three main ones. He speaks to us through his word, through circumstances, and other Christians. And, uh, and you know, it's God's desire to speak to all of his children. He doesn't just desire to speak to some, but when he speaks to us, when he talks to us, when he reveals stuff to us through his word, when he, uh, what's the better word to use, when he illuminates it, okay? That's probably the, the light. When he gives us more light, we, we need to be ready to hear what he has to say. And, and this is a passage that 
Um, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I come back to quite often. Because there's times God will say stuff to me and I'll just, uh, it's not that I dismiss it, but I just kind of put it on the back burner. Has anybody ever done something like that when the Lord will speak to you and you just kind of skip over it real quick, thinking that he really didn't see me skip over it, but, but he does. But we need, to, we need to be careful because we, we need to read this and, and we need an understanding of it. And it, it, the first verse is really, I want to investigate all, the, the, all seven that I, I read, but the, the thought is, is really to watch our step. And the way we watch our step is to be more ready to hear than to speak. And it's interesting. When we come to the Lord's house, why, why do we come to church? Why do we come to Sunday school? We come to hear from God. We come to get help. We come to get instruction. We come to get guidance. Um, we come for fellowship. It's, it's, it's a combination of all this, but we, we need to come to his house and be ready to hear. A lot of times um, there's clutter in our minds, and I, I speak a lot about that, and, and I, I, I repeat myself often, but it's true. Some of you may be sitting here making out a grocery list or, or thinking about what's for lunch. And that's the way our minds are wired. Our minds are wired to pay attention for about two or three, four minutes and then go to a commercial. Right. And then we you start looking around and you got to say something or do something to get everybody's attention back. And you get their attention for a little while. I'm, I'm one of them. Right. Your mind will start. Jeff said something this morning and I was off in left field. I was looking through the Bible, but I didn't hear a word he said. And then he said something that got my attention right back. And it, but we're like that. And if you look around the world today, there's not too many people that are paying attention. There's not too many people that are, and are listening. And, and, and to be honest with you, I think it's because they feel like they've heard it all. They have all the answers. There's a lot of people that think they, they know everything, that they don't need to be taught anything anymore. But I'm here to tell you that there is such a thing as, as the providence of God, and, and He's always working. There's not a day that God is not working providentially in our lives to, to make us to, to listen to Him. And uh, My daddy used to make this statement. Sometimes I'd hear him and him and my mama talking. I've tried and tried to tell him, but he just don't listen. I, I, I've used this illustration before, but it, it still bears truth. There was two uh, farmers that were bragging on their, their, their mules, and the one guy said, I, I've got the greatest mule in the county. He said, I'll trade him for yours. I guarantee you he'll plow anything you want him to plow. Do double the work. So they traded him. Well, the farmer that got this so-called great um, mule, he tried to pull him out of the barn, and he got about halfway out the gate, and he stopped. He tugged on him, and that, that mule just wasn't budging. And just so happened, the guy that, that traded him was coming up, and he said, this is a piece of junk right here. He said, this animal, he said, I can't get him to plow. And the, uh, the other farmer, he just walked right by him like he didn't even hear him. And he looked in the barn, he picked up a big old stick, and he come back and he whacked that mule on the side of the head and knocked him down. And he leaned down when the mule got up, he said, now plow. Sometimes the Lord has to get our attention to listen. He really does. And he, he to, to what's so sad I've seen this over the years, and maybe you have. God works overtime getting some people to listen. He, he, he really does. And, it, and the reason why we're not here, and it's not like he doesn't have something to say to us. He, he's got a whole bunch to say, but we're just not ready to listen. We've, we've got our own agendas. We've got our own ideas about things. And, and there's a beautiful connection in this verse between our hearing and going to the house of God. It's important. We have to look. Look at verse one. Keep thy foot when thou goest into the house of God. Watch your step and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Solomon is speaking, of course, about going into the temple. And, and, and you know, there's there's all kind of activities that, that go on in church that really have nothing to do with the word of God. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not against having having fun and, and, and joking around and kidding, but you know, there, it, it, the, 
It should all focus on the preaching of the Word of God. It should focus on the Sunday school lesson, and, and that's it. All the other stuff, I, I think, is peripheral, and, and we need to be careful. There's a lot of people who are going to church, but, but they're listening, and, but they're just not hearing. They're not hearing what the Lord says, and we've got to be ready to hear. In Matthew chapter 17, flip over there, hold your spot, if you would. Matthew chapter 17, um, the Lord went up onto the mountain. It's the, the story about the, the Mount of Transfiguration. And he went up there and he was transfigured, uh, you know the story, into his glorious likeness that he'll come back in one day. And Peter, James, and John uh, went with him and uh, they saw him transfigured and Jesus was standing in his glory and Moses and Elijah came and suddenly they were standing next to him. And of course, Moses represented the law and Elijah represented the prophets. And the Bible says in verse 1, And after six days Jesus taken Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into the high mountain, and transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, his raiment as white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah, Elias, talking with him. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then answered Peter and said unto the Lord, uh, unto Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If thou wilt, let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. And while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. God, God changed Peter's mind, right? He got Peter's attention, didn't he, when he spoke. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that old scene? I've thought about it multiple times. Jesus is in his glory and you've got Moses and Elijah there. And, and that alone right there would be thrilling just, just to see something like that. And, and Peter, it was so great. He didn't want to go back down and he popped off. Let's make a tabernacle. Let's make something for all three of them. God said, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You hear him. And listening to the Lord Jesus, listen to him and let him speak to you. And let me ask you a question. You believe we can have a revival in our day? Do you truly believe we won't have revival until God's people start listening to God and, and start being obedient to him? And we've got to if the only way we're going to have revival, if we listen to him. I know I sound like a broken record, but I want you to understand this. When we come here, we've got to hear. James says this in James 1.19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. So when we come to church, are we ready to hear? Be honest, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes there's a lot of things going on in my mind, and sometimes I have to sit there before I get in here and say, Lord free my mind yes i've studied yes i've prepared but there's a lot of times you know things will will, will occupy us and, and we have to be careful but when we come to church that's the question we have to answer are, are you ready to hear Do, if you come ready to hear will he not fill your cup he, he'll overflow it where it's running out on the platter i, I promise you verse two of our text is be not rash with thy mouth and let not thine a heart to be hasty to utter anything for for God for for God is in heaven and thou upon the earth therefore let thy words be few it was this verse this morning when when brother Jeff was talking in Sunday school that this Lord this is what changed my mind when you were talking about God being everywhere God's in heaven we, we have to understand that you know something was referring to God's view first of all God has a view of our lives he, he has, when, when we come, to, now this is all logical. There's nothing profound in this. When we come to the house of God, where is God? God's in heaven, isn't he? And, and, and yes, uh, you might say that he dwells in the heart of every believer, and you would be correct in saying that because we're temples. If you're saved, you're temples of the Holy Ghost. And God, yes, God lives in us. But the Bible says that he's in heaven. And to illustrate that he's in heaven and he sees everything, I can use a Bible verse. Proverbs 15, 3 says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. I, the point I, I, I'm going to drive home this morning is the, the view God has of our life is not the view that we have of our lives. The view God has of our life is not the way we view our, our lives. He, he sees everything. Not only does he see, but he, he sees all the, the circumstances uh, surrounding us. And all we see is what's coming down the road. 
was coming around the corners like a parade. He's like the blimp that's way above the city watching. You can see all the accesses, but what do we see? We just see what comes around the corner to us and what's going around the other corner. But God knows everything. And, and, and you know, here's another thing, and, and which I like, and it's free. He knows what we need. There's not anything that goes on in our life that he doesn't know. And the fact that he uses preachers and teachers and, and, and such to speak the truth of God's word, to give us a message, that gives us direction. He, that's how he speaks to us. And, and the thing about it is when we come to church, we're tired from a long weekend. Are we listening? though? Are we listening? In, in, our, in our text, there's a... I guess a natural progression. We we go to the house of God where where God's going to speak because He has a view of the whole picture. He he see, he sees He sees it all and He speaks to us and and what do we do when He talks to us? Hopefully we listen. But you know what happens sometimes? We make vows. Okay, here's where. The, 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 the rubber meets the road, so to speak, is what I mean by vows is we commit, we, we listen to the word of God, we hear him and, and we're moved by the spirit of God to, to, to make a, a vow or commit certain things to him that we're going to do. And, and, and it's all in good faith to, to show our, our, our devotion to him. I will say this, don't make it out of motion. Because our, our emotions will take us to places we really don't want to go. Just make sure it's, it's God speaking to you and, and, and not self of what I want to do. Verse 4 says, When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. For he hath no pleasures in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better uh, is it that thou shouldest not vow than thou shouldest vow, vow, and not pay. You know, God didn't require his people to make vows in order to be accepted by him. But the opportunity was there for them to express their, their, their devotion if they felt led to do so. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 21, you don't have to turn there. But the Bible says this, When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear uh, to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. Uh, that which is gone out of thy lips, uh, thou shalt keep and perform even a, a free will offering according to according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. So in verse four of our text, Solomon, um, he, he warns of, of two sins. Notice, he says, for when thou vows a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools, pay that which thou hast vowed. So the, the first thing is making a vow. This is the, the, the sins, making a vow with no intention of keeping it. Well, we'll do that quick, won't we? The second one is, is making a vow and then, then delaying, not following through with it and, and hoping you can get out of it. And then when the, the, the priest or the angel, the, the messenger came to collect the promise, you say, well, if, if, forgive me about my vow because it was a mistake. God doesn't operate like that. And, and I'll talk about this a little later, but a Bible verse. And, and, and this is not my opinion, folks. I'm going to give you a Bible to back this up. Be careful. Matthew 12, 36, Jesus said this, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. God hears what we say, folks. He hears and he'll hold us to our promises. And in saying that, we have to investigate, secondly, the, the, the vow that we make to God. Some people take or have taken their vows lightly. Some people may say, oh, years ago in church, I made this kind of statement to the Lord. Or I made this promise to the Lord. And somewhere as a boy, I'll say, sure, Lord, I'll follow you. And then it was many years later, you know, there's a lot of things that happened in my life. And that's why I'm not serving the Lord. But, you know, God remembers what you said all those years ago. He, he, he writes down everything that we do in a book, a book of remembrance. So he pays attention. And um, I hear people say all the time, I'm not out doing bad things, but you know all you have to do to throw your life away is just drift through life. Just don't do anything. What we need to be doing is making vows to God and, and right kind of vows and making right commitments, uh, uh, commit ourselves to being disciplined and, and living out the word of God. And, you know, 
this is the first generation that has the ability and technology to track everybody on earth. So think about this. This is the first generation where we have the ability to, to communicate globally with people simultaneously. I can pick the phone up and call David Laodema in West Africa just as easy as I can call the Penix up in, up in Alaska. We, we have that capability. We, the first generation with the ability to eliminate or control worldwide currency, they're trying to do that. They're, they're, they're going to do it eventually. We have the ability to monitor the movement of people electronically. If you don't believe me, talk about something this afternoon with your phone sitting right there by you. When you scan social media, what pops up? Big Brother's listening, ain't he? Somebody's listening. The marketers or whoever it is. But we, we it's, it's amazing. We can monitor all buying and selling. How do they do that? With computers. I hope we realize that if, 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 if we can stay in contact with each other in, in that kind of way, isn't God capable of, of, of watching over us and, 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 and keeping up with what we do? And, I, I, you know, I, I, God spoke to my heart years ago when somebody explained to me that Jesus came to this earth to, to bleed and, and die for me and, and that he was buried. I mean, I understood it up here, but I had multiple te people teach me as an adult. And, and, and the Lord finally revealed to, uh, to me that I was living in my sin and I needed to be saved. And I, and I was saved. It was by His grace. And, you know, I, I made a promise. And I promised God I'd live for Him all my life. I made a, a, a specific promise to that, but I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to to go there, but I made a vow and I intend on keeping that vow with his help. I, I'm going to live for him. And it, maybe somebody else has made that same vow when you got say, Lord, I'm going to live for you the rest of my life. You, you did this for me and I, I'm going to live. And, and I know some of you may be thinking, but, but, but pastor, you're, you were, you're a preacher now. Yeah, but I was a Christian first. I made this vow. And Tracy reminded me of this. I made this vow as a new Christian. I'm talking about probably within a month of being saved. I told him I would live for him uh, the rest of my life. And I surrendered to his call. And, and I surrendered to his call to, to, to preach one day. And, and I am. I'm trying to do the best I can. But we, we've got to understand that sometimes we make vows. that, that and, and It's what he wants us to do. He calls missionaries. He, he calls evangelists. And, and, and it's God that impresses us to, to make that vow. That's why I have to, there's a fine line. My goodness, there's a fine line by, by our will and God's will. And we have to be careful. And one thing my preacher told me years ago, you back up God's will with Scripture. If you don't have Scripture to back up, it's you. And I believe that, and I've made, believe me, <clears throat> you can ask Tracy, I've made a lot of decisions, <clears throat> but they've all been on, 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 based on Scripture. And my only advice to, to all of us, it's Scripture. If you make a vow, keep it. If you're not going to keep it, don't make it. Right? I mean, that, that's, that's really the bottom line. Don't do anything out of emotion. I taught my children this, and, and I, I reminded uh, Katie and Connor of this. They, they've been praying about a, a house. They live in an apartment now, and they're praying about somewhere to live it, it, down there in Slidell. And, and when they found something, I said, you give it 72 hours. My preacher taught me that when I was a kid. He said, anything of significance, give it 72 hours because that takes the emotion out of it. Because when you see something, it's like, oh, this is neat. This, it, this is a nice uh, 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 thing to do here. And look at all these rooms and the tile. And you get enamored by your emotion. So give it some time and then allow the Lord to speak to your heart. And we have to be careful when we vow. But here's the thing. And lastly, this is we can have victory. When we through all this is mentioned earlier, the victory is simple. Verse, verse 6 says this, Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. What's he talking about? Don't talk yourself out of what you were going to do in the first place. It's if it was God, you stick with it. 
If you're going to, if you said you were going to do something, then ask the Lord to, to help you do it. Hey, is the road going to get hard? Yeah, absolutely. But you know what? If God calls you to do it, he's going to make a way for you to do it and, and, and make a way to, to just continue. But a lot of times what we do is we'll, we'll say, I'll do this, Lord, but later on we don't do it. And we've caused our mouth to cause our flesh to sin. And he said in verse 6, Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. So who, who's the angel? Uh, the angel is the preacher. It's, it's God's messenger. The, the word angel comes from the unused root uh, meaning dispatch or messenger. And it's talking about it, uh, the book of Revelation. Go back to there. When he talks about the angel of the church, the word angel we understand to be the messenger or, or the, the overseer, the pastor that presides over the church. And the Bible says not to go to the angel and say that it was an heir. I should have never said it. Don't never go to the messenger of God that, that God used to speak to you. And it could be another Christian. Because God uses other people to, to, to talk to you. You know, I do this, but, but I'm going to back out of it because it, that's just not for me. Maybe because it, it's too hard. Don't do that. I, I guess the, the one thing, have we recognized, here's maybe something else. Have we recognized the messengers that God has in our lives? I, 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 I have. Have you recognized the places where you, you met God and He's spoken to you? Now, I, I'm, I'm always thankful. I'm grateful that uh, when, I, when I sit in church services, when I'm not preaching, or if I go to, to meetings, and um, when, when I, even when I get alone with God and, and the Lord gets my attention about things and He speaks to me and, and he, 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 he leads me to do things and um, the thing that I, I love about that when the Lord speaks to me, even now I've been saved with, with 25 years and I, I, I want to live for the Lord until he takes me home. But the thing is, when the when Lord speaks to me, you know what that lets me, that encourages me, encourages me for one reason. He's still interested in what I'm doing. I mean, it sounds like a minute thing, but you know what? We get all wrapped up in the world, and I'm glad God still speaks to little old me. Because who am I? I I'm, I'm, I'm nobody. I'm, I'm thankful. And there again, he's in heaven. God's in heaven. There are vows we make to him, and the victory is simple. It's just continuing to do what we said we're going to do. And this, what is the simplest form of, of victory? Obedience. Just obey. Obedience. Obedience is the very way to show that you will, you you believe. When I feel like giving up, you've been there. Yes. When you feel like turning around, the truth I have to stay. This is this is what where the Lord led me. The Lord brought me here. Again, verse six. Suffer that not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at that voice and destroy the work of thy hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words there are also divers vanities. But fear thou God. Don't, don't let your, your mouth self talk you out of your vow. Don't, don't run and, and back out on, on something that God has led you to do through the word of God. Ask him. Okay, it's getting hard, Lord. I... I I tell him all the time, if you don't help me when I stand in this pulpit, I will make a mess of everything. And I will. I promise you. As foolish as I am about things sometimes, yeah, absolutely. But I ask him, so Lord, you, you direct my, my mouth and you direct my ways. I can devise all the schemes I want to, but it's the Lord that directs my steps. And I ask him specifically, Lord, you work things out today. You know what, what, what's in my heart to preach. You put it there. So you, you settle me. You clear all the clutter out of my mind to where I can encourage your children. So don't back out of things. You know, ask the Lord that if he called you to do it, do it. Do we not serve a God that is able to help us? Yeah, he's able. He's more than able to help us out. He, he'll enable us to do what he's led us to do. And we'll, we'll be able to attempt it for him. You know, if it got hard on the mission field and our missionaries left, quit, our God's not a big God, is he? But that's not just for 
for them. That's for everybody in the pew. He's a big God for all of us. Verse 7, a, a, a warning. He warns us. He says, for in the multitude of dreams and the, the words, there are also divers vanity. If we're, we're not careful, we get around the wrong crowd and the wrong environment and, and people start giving us vain and empty ideas about our life. And if we listen to all the noise, what happens? We'll get away from God. We'll get away from what God has led us to do. And how do we stop from getting away from God? But fear thou God. That's how he ended this whole little section. You want to be able to hang in there? You want to be able to keep going? Have the right reverence for God. Don't be afraid of him. He's in heaven and he loves you. We're, he's obligated himself to take care of us. Stay with it. How many of us have needed advice lately? Now, there's a lot of people in this world that have much advice to, to, to give, but a lot of the advice people give me is not to be heeded. If you want to start knowing the direction, who do you go to? Go to God. We need to be careful. See, the only thing that matters in, in, in our, our lives is to fear God. It is to, to reverence Him. That's all that matters. When you fear Him, you're going to know His voice. Again, when's the last time you heard His voice? And the last time you heard His voice, did you listen to His voice? It doesn't have to be big things. It really doesn't. Here's the simplicity of this. Lord, impressed on your heart lately to witness to somebody? Or me? And you didn't do it? Sure, Lord, you just give me the opportunity. How many times have you said it? Lord, if you give me the opportunity to witness to somebody, I will. And it's just right in your face. And you, you just, because there might be people around and you don't. That's a vow, right? Lord, I'll do it. If you, if you open the door for me, I'll do it. It's that, see, it's that simple. And we, we don't think on simplistic terms sometimes, but you, 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 you've got to listen. And the way we listen and the way we'll continue to listen is to have the right view of God, which is what? Fear God. See, the reason why there's a lot not happening today is because a lot of people don't fear God. I'm not talking about being afraid of them, but I, in my mind, I think about this. Everything I do and, and the, 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 you know, the foolishness, the silliness sometimes, and the Lord's like, you know, every idle word that you say is going to be accountable one day. That's the reality of it. We, we, we serve a holy God. We serve a righteous God, a just God. And, and there's lives at stake, and, and we, we need to fear Him. That's the only way we're going to continue to do the work of God in this day and time is to fear Him. Fear Him more than I fear everybody else or fear the consequences of what's going to happen. It's coming down the road depending on what happens Tuesday and Tuesday. Where are we going? Where's the country headed? It's not going to get any better, I promise you that, because the book tells us that. The book you have in your lap tells us it's not going to get any better. But we can still be a light, but we, a lot of us got our, we're, got our light hid. Because we don't have the right perspective of God. We, we need to fear Him. So the question we have to ask us, you know, through the invitation is how many of us know that we've been in church at one time or another and God has specifically spoken to you about something to do for him? It wasn't an audible voice. I'm, I'm not talking about that. I don't know how many times I've been to meetings and I've heard a preacher say something and it was just one thing. It's like, oh, OK. You, some of you nodding your head. You, you know what I'm talking about. Or an evangelist comes in. A missionary comes in. Your Sunday school teacher. My goodness, those are all messengers. And you, you, the Lord speaks to you. And you know it's definitely a leading from the Lord. You've all had that happen. We, we've all had that happen. God gave us an impression on our, our spirit. And he, he let us know what we were to do. And where we were to go. And the decisions that we were supposed to make. And the reason why we don't keep those decisions is because we fear people and circumstances and Instead of God. Shame on me. 
there's been time in my life and, and Tracy can attest to this being in the ministry full time that I've had to make some pretty difficult decisions life altering decisions but I didn't do it emotionally sometimes I got questioned if I was procrastinating because that's that's my nature is to procrastinate about things. But when it comes to things of God, I want to make sure it's right. I want to make sure that God's in it. When God's in it, I, I move. Because he's not going to make a mistake. I will. So I want to listen to him. And, and my point is this. When we come to the, to the house of God, we should be expecting to hear from him. Is there not things in our life that need tweaking or, or figuring out or direction in where we're supposed to go how are we going to know which way to go if we don't pray about it yeah he knows because he's in heaven sure and we're on earth but we, we've got to we've got to have the assurance that he loves me because when we know he really loves me and he wants good for me he wants to give me an, an expected end yeah maybe it's hard okay it's hard but he's still in it. Jeff was talking about something this morning. I don't know. I don't think he, he heard me. But I, he was talking about all the trouble and stuff. You know, Paul talked about our light affliction is but for a moment. All this turmoil and all this tragedy and all this perilous times he talked about it that's going to happen in the, in the last days. He, he told the church of Corinth, it's just light affliction. It's but for a moment in the light of eternity. What we have to go through here is, is nothing. It's a blink. That's why we should fear God, because we're going to stay with him. For, we don't know what tomorrow is going to happen. He could come back today. Follow him. Trust him. We should live every day. And, and this is not for, for, for us. And, and, and this is what I wrote down. We should live every day expecting him to speak to us. And when he speaks, we should be ready to hear and, and be, be ready to obey. A lot of times what happens is we hear him. And I get accused of this at the house, rightly so. And they're right. She's, she's grinning back there because I don't know how many times they've been talking to me. And it's like, you ain't heard a word I said. I was listening. But if there was something on the TV that I was watching, forget it. Or if I was studying, there's a lot of times I'll be studying and I'll be talking to myself and she'll say, are you talking to me or are you talking to yourself? But I don't know how many times I got told that as a kid. There's a lot of times we come in here and we hear and we listen in, but we're not paying attention. And he's speaking directly about us. We've we prayed something earlier in the week and, and there's a decision that we have to make. And then, then you get in church and unbeknownst to me, the Lord uses me to make a comment or, or say something that if we'd have been listening, you'd have had your answer. It's that simple. And it works like that, too, because I've been on the other end of this. You know, this, this is the Lord's business and it's, it's marvelous in our eyes. When we hear, we've, we've got to be ready to hear. We have to be prepared to hear. That's why I pray, Lord, clear the clutter out of our minds and help us to dismiss all the cares and the burdens. The burden, it's weighty things. We let our burdens cloud his voice out sometimes. I do it. You, you do it as well. But it all boils down to one thing. When you hear him, obey. He said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. If I tell you, if he speaks to you, if he impresses your heart about something, then, then you know, I, I'm on the side of this. I always err on caution. You can call it, um, um, I can't think of the word right now, that I don't trust him. But, but I'll wait and say, okay, Lord, if this is right, you tell me again. It's not throwing out the fleece or nothing. I'm not talking about that. You know, you sure you really, have you ever said it? You sure you really want me to do this, Lord? Show me again. Sometimes we do that all week. Show me again. Show me again. It's disobedience. It really is. Oh, Because once he says it, what does he want us to do? What would have happened if Noah delayed? You can go down through all the characters of the Bible. Saul tried to get out of it. He made a vow and he tried to get out of it when 
when Samuel came to him, what's all the bleeding in my ears? Well, he blamed it on everybody. It's your, your people. They did it. We just need to listen. For, we need to come prepared, okay? Because I promise you, Brother Aaron's coming next week. And, and thank you, by the way, everybody, that, that for what you did for me last month, all, all the gifts and the cards, the whole nine yards. But he's coming. I promise you that young man, when he stands in his pulpit, he will be prepared to preach what the Lord has laid on, the, on his heart to preach. So therefore, we, our job, is to prepare our hearts before we get to the house of God to be ready to listen to where we can hear what he says because we may have a big decision that we have to make. And it just may be that young man pop off and say something just subtle. And if we're not listening and listening to the Holy Spirit, we won't be, we'll miss it. We won't be ready to hear it. We have to be ready to hear it. But if you hear it, obey. Heavenly Father, thank you so much.